Welcome to another episode of the Parents Lounge. Uh, I'm Jamie Kaler. I am joined, as always, by my partner in crime and my co-host, uh, Mr. Jason Gowan. How are you today, brother? Hello. How you doing, buddy? Fantastic. I mean, you, kind you, of. Let's you look. Ahead. You look. There, you, there's like two facets of you right now. You look both completely relieved and and like re-energized, but also completely exhausted at the same time. Dude, I mean, it was fun. My buddy Mike Cisco, my my old improv uh, partner from uh, San Diego, who I think is now in New York. Is that right, Mike? Uh, we used to do improv down there, so I lived there for my twenties, and so I went back and I did the La Jolla Comedy Store, which is for most comics on earth, it's like one of their favorite clubs on the planet. Super fun, great staff, just and you're in San Diego. And it was really, uh, it was super fun, but I had two shows a night and then I couldn't sleep. You know, you'd be jacked up after the show and I'm eating spicy Thai food and having a glass of wine and like regaling around with the rest of the staff. And then, um, you know, stumbling back to the hotel at like midnight, one o'clock and just, and then couldn't sleep till like three because I was so jacked from the shows. But because I have two kids, even though that all happened and I didn't go to sleep till 3 a.m. every morning at 5.30, the light went on and I couldn't go back to sleep because the kids have basically trained me to go. We don't, we don't care what's happening to you. You're getting up at five 30 and making pancakes before we go to school. So I got home yesterday. I was like, Oh yeah, I got some sleep and just slept for like a day. Did you go down and just make pancakes for the hotel staff then? Or yeah, I went down and they, you know, they had the uh, little, no, uh, uh, no, I just laid in bed and tried that. You know, when you're like so tired and you just are trying to sleep and it's so frustrating because in your mind, you're like, well, the kids aren't here. The kids aren't here, but you've been so ingrained with that responsibility that your brain's like, no, no, something's wrong here. We should be, we should be doing something. Somebody should be yelling at us. Uh, we, do the, do the kids need to be anywhere? What's happening? But you're just in a hotel room, like alone, like can't sleep. I have not been without my children. I don't even know when the last time I was without like a doctor's appointment. And even that they were like in the car, just waiting for me. So you haven't even been like, a, like I was like that. We talked about that even on stage. I talked about it during the pandemic and like people without kids were like, we don't know what you're talking about. The pandemic is the greatest thing that ever happened to them. They were like, couldn't have been happier in the last year. But as a parent of like, you know, five year old and a six year old at the time, it was, I was with them every day, all day, all day. All all day. All day. No, also all day. All day. All, but all day. And but also all day. Yes, definitely that as well. And then um, just like that's why I would get to the end of the night and I'd finally put them to bed and I'd be like quivering and I'd be like just trying to like, you know, television at that point is just visual heroin where it's just like somebody's pouring liquid warm butter over your face. You just go, can somebody shut my brain off? And my wife would be like, you're going to watch TV? I go, yeah. Yeah, I just was with them for 14 straight and it's going to click on again at 5 a.m. So, yeah. Yeah. I I envy that you got away. Like, I don't even know when I will, like, August, I guess, when the oldest goes to school will be when that starts. Because my job's still frozen. Like, my, yeah. my like my regular job's still frozen. So. We don't. And Kate, my wife was going to come down for, like, a night or two. I had, I had a hotel in La Jolla, California. And I was doing shows at night, but I was still, you know, during the day I was just there and uh, she was going to come down. But. We don't have any family out here, so we really didn't have anyone to watch the kids. <laughs> it's like, oh, so you like missed the like a like a little couple's time away? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I did have two shows a night. Like, I would get to the club at six thirty, and then I'd be there until midnight doing shows. But, um, but it would have been nice to get away. But I mean, I, we talk about that a lot. With, um, I'd love to hear what other what what people say in comments whether they have because everyone says it takes a village. But the problem is, if you don't live near your village, you're in serious trouble. Is that really difficult? Because like our village is here. Like there are, we have family here. Is that like, how hard is that to like exist in that space? It's gruesome. Anytime, any, anytime you want to be away from your kids, you have to pay for it. Like you have to pay someone to watch your children. I mean, we have great neighbors and good friends and stuff. And, you know, we've, you know, can occasionally, but the kids are so young. It's tough to like go have a sleepover and stuff. So and we have two of them. If it was one, but you can't say, hey, can you take both my kids for the night? It's People would be like, are you insane? Our village broke up with us. Ah, that's funny. That's funny. Definitely could not do it without my village. I mean, that's why a lot of times my wife will always be like, you know, we, we ponder moving back to Jersey and New York area where her family is. 
it'd be great. We love, I love our family. It'd be awesome to have some family to leave, dump our, to, to dump our kids on, which is hilarious. But yeah. We, so we, if we, when we, if, and when we do escape from them, we can't put them all on one person because our three are nightmarish. It's like living. And, and that's maybe, maybe that's the greatest excuse to not have the third. Like two is like, you could give somebody two kids and go like, take these. But if, when you give someone three, you're saying, hey, I have 24 bags in my car. Can you carry them all at once? And it, you can't. It's impossible. No. Yeah. That's a real job. Well, for three. Well, the other thing is like the twins, like their conscience split. So each of them only has half a conscience. And so when they're at a place, they are destructive. Like the oldest one, you can reason with him to some degree, but the twins, they don't give no shits. None. No, they don't. Then why would they? They don't. My kids don't. My kids don't care. Oh, We've considered crazy. just getting appropriately sized dog crates to leave them in to go to like a lunch. Like, is why that frowned upon? What child why services? Why couldn't you kennel them? Feels like yeah, they should. Why is there no child kennel? You know, actually, to be honest with you, it'd probably be safer to leave your kids with a kennel because people who love their dogs kennel their dogs, but when they get the dog back, the dog can't really tell them if something crazy happened. But at least with kids, the kid would go, oh, that she wouldn't, she didn't walk me. She didn't give me a treat. She didn't pick up my poop. Like, you know, like a kid could speak to you, but a dog, you can't, you know, you don't know what's happening with dogs at kennels, man. We have those ring cameras in our house, so we could just put them on the kids, I guess, and watch what's going on. What, no, funny thing, when I went to Disney World, we took our pets and we put them in Disney World's uh, pet hotel. Yeah. The pets had better accommodations than our family. Like they were bringing in snacks. They were reading to our dogs. Like our dog did back not come from home. Back with us. up. Back up. Not joking. That's not true. They were reading. Look it up. It's what? a real thing. What That's did they 100, read? 101 Dalmatians. Which, by the way, is it? I mean, for, for a dog, that would be a terrifying story of like, here, I'm going to read a story to you about, like, if it would be if I was reading a story to Claire and I was like, this is a story about 101 children and this crazy woman who wants to take the skin off of all of them and make a coat. And let's read. Like, that's a terrifying story to read to a dog. It would be like reading Dumbo to an elephant. And the, and the, kids <laughs> would, the elephant would be like, wait, what happened to the mom? It didn't. It didn't go great at parts. Yeah, I guess that's like akin to like watching a horror movie for a dog. That's the, yeah. yeah. Either way, our dog did not want to come home, and we could watch him on the cameras. Like you could you, on your phone, pull it up while you were at the park and see I mean, what he was doing. I mean, if you want to read a dog a book to a dog, you read Cujo, right? You're like, because then, the, then the dog's like, oh, this. You might leave off the last chapter or two with a dog, bone. right? But the whole he'd be like, oh, this is a great story about a rabid. Uh, St. Bernard that just goes ballistic and starts killing people. Like that's yeah, it's like an empowerment dog. video for their empowerment story for them. Yeah. Yeah. Read some dogs. So anyway, San Diego was super fun. And I actually, it was really funny because I did an entire hour. I have a whole new hour. Like I put out that album last June. And so since then and the pandemic, I wrote an entire new hour of material and I stuck to my guns and I didn't do any old jokes. And it went great when there were parents there. So four of the five shows were heavily, uh, with, I mean, you've seen the photo of me with the two kids at the beginning is, that's my promo shot for doing stand-up. You so, might assume that there's some parenting stuff in there. Might, it would be like, like if you went to see like a, a Christian rock band, but you were like, oh, I like jazz. You're not getting jazz, dude. You're getting Christian rock. Like this is, and so I have two kids and the late show Saturday was all like 20 and 21 year olds. It was, and they were, I was doing parenting stuff and they're like, what, what are you talking? Like no idea what I was talking about. And could so, you, could you just switch when that happens? Could you just switch out children with avocado toast and they get the, the like, actually, I should have, I should have found a substitute of like bad, like instead of children, it's like dating a bad boyfriend or something. Mm. And you go, yeah, oh, my boyfriend, uh, you know, t like, just wouldn't pick up his plates and that he, his room was a mess and just, it would be everything like kids, but you know, that it would be a boyfriend. But they were like, him hid his headphones under the couch. And like halfway through the show, I, uh, I was like, look, I, I can do old material, but honestly, I, I wrote this and I'm doing this very specifically for a reason. And uh, it turned into, I told him, I said, this is kind of like a Christmas carol. 
and I'm the door knocker with Jacob Marley's face warning you. <laughs> and they were like, they didn't get the reference of a Christmas Carol. What? I, I have a joke in it where I go, I'm I'm too old to have kids, you know. Uh, having kids at my age is like getting a DUI just as you pull into a driveway. And then I talk about Lethal Weapon, and I say, uh, I go. Uh, I go, I know I'm too old to have kids because I was watching Lethal Weapon the other day and Danny Glover's character, who's like retiring from his lifelong career and keeps saying, I'm too old for this shit. I'm six years older than him. All the old parents are like, ah! and then the kids are like, what, what, really quick, what's Lethal Weapon? I was like, you know how I know I'm old? Because I'm quoting Lethal Weapons from like 1986 and people are lighting me up. Super fun. You're going to have to quote like the 21st Fast and Furious, I guess, to get the, get them to know. Yeah, I, yeah, we gotta get into that feud between The Rock and Vin Diesel. I read something. Vin Diesel doesn't want The Rock to be such a prominent part of the next movie. You've made eleven of them, dude. You know, take the paycheck and shut up. Yeah, I mean, the guy's getting paid to be the voice of Groot. So, like, really? I love that big. So, so uh, it was super great to be away from my children. But you know, it's funny. I mean, I, I of course was down there, and you know, I'm like in the on the cove of. Uh, over the water and I'm like the first and there were seals or all these seals and all these kids were looking at the seals and I was like oh this is great and then half of me was like my kids would love this what you know so it was what it was I we are going to get one day away from them next week because we have to take my wife to her heart scan appointment and so we've got my parents are taking the twins and her parents are taking Jace so that we that we just can't combine powers so we're going to have an afternoon. You got to break them up. I think, honestly, it was funny because we finally did that for the first time in a long time where my wife went back east. Uh, oh, yeah. And she took one of them. And she didn't want to. She didn't. She goes, I don't like to split them up. And I totally was the opposite. I think you should split them up. And I will tell you, when they were split up, it was unbelievable how well behaved they were. It was like taking gasoline away from the match and keeping them separate. And, the, and oh. once they got back together, they were ah, like lunatics again. But when they were separate... And it was just one on one with one parent and one child. It was super fun. And, and they've been together like the whole pandemic. So like they were they've together together. They've been together. They've been together since they were born. Like they are thick as thieves. Yeah. Yeah. So um oh actually we should talk about what a great show we have tonight, by the way. I, I get yeah, caught up right? with, um we this is our weekly catch up. It's kind of fun too, because so many people have reached out and been like, it's it's our little uh parental oasis of the week, I always say. But um, we have such a great guest tonight. Our friend Josh Wolf is here, who's a fantastic comic, super funny, great dad, great stories. And then because our rant of the week, right? We did our dad rant of the week with my friend John uh, Nixon, who came in. We're going to keep it going. So tonight, Dave Schrader's coming in for his 92nd rant of the week. And then we'll have Josh kind of kind of climb on board. And for you guys out there who who have things going on that you need to get off your chest as a parent and you need the 90 second rant, hit us up. We'll get you in uh, for another time. That's right. And also, we should say we have it's funny because you were talking about the old clips we had. Uh, we were talking about the Richard Mark show and stuff. And so people can always go back and watch watch all the old shows that we have. But yeah. Um, yeah, and anybody who, you know, if you're, you know, finding, you know, we don't know where you're finding this at, let us know, first of all, in the comments, where are you watching this at, so that we can kind of, you know, make sure that we're tailoring to you. Leave your comments, leave your questions while we're doing the show, yeah. and also check out our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash The Barons Lounge. So, uh, I just, it's so funny, every Tuesday I have to take my daughter to soccer practice, right? So uh, it's, tonight was the last day of soccer. There's only a couple weeks left. We, the kids finally went back to school, right? And they're like, right. and all of a sudden today I'm like, the parents are like, oh my God, this is great. And then one parent's like, you know, there's only like two weeks left in school. It's like, and everyone's like, oh, but camps are starting, which I never really got to do as a kid, but we are sending my kids to camps. Are they big where you are? Because they're kind of big here. Um, they are specifically for things like 4-H or like a specific like sport, but there's no like specific summer camp that I'm aware of. Oh, really? Yeah. Too young. Your kids are too young. Once they get into school, it's like the, it's like the rage. All the, I, and all of a sudden, if you're not sending your kid to the camp, like there's a sports camp, it's a weekly sports camp, and, but it's a day camp. So it's like from nine to five. Oh, Okay. So, uh, yeah, I never, I went to like one camp in my whole life and I begged and pleaded. And then I went to Ted Williams baseball camp for like one week down the Cape in Massachusetts. Um, 
It was crazy. Well, that's I where you're from, right? You're from the north, the middle, yeah, yeah, or the middle sure. east. Yeah, I just begged and pleaded to go, and they finally like been. And I'm sure it was like no money, but it was an overnight camp, and I went for the week. But my kids are already like one's in kindergarten, and she's already like, oh, we're going to sports camp, like just incredibly spoiled. But I wanted to do it because here's what I thought: is I wasn't going to do it because it, you know, we're just I thought like it's. Is it, is, it, is it worth the money or whatever? But because the kids didn't have any social interaction for the entire year, I thought, well, we'll pony up for this summer and we'll go so that they can go kind of reintegrate with humans again and not just each other. But I wonder if I'm setting the bar too high and that they are now going to every summer be like, what's happening? We're not going, we go to camp every summer, dad. So I don't know. I might be, I might be setting the bar. I don't know. We did soccer with, we just got the email today that soccer start, like our soccer club is starting here or, or the signups are. And I asked Jason, like, cause I helped him. I co helped coach last year and I partway through like the season, he was over it cause they were like wanting the kids to wear masks and he did not want to be running, wearing the mask. And he would like drift off in mid field and like at one point i talked i caught him pretending he was a raptor from jurassic park and he started stalking one of the other kids and i'm like whoa well and i have to like do the scene from jurassic world with chris pratt where i'm like holding up my hands on the on the soccer field trying to get my kid wrangled in and i said to jace i, I said hey we got the email about soccer Are you, do you want to play this year and he goes about that i don't know so I don't know if we're going to be playing again this year, but he did not seem terribly thrilled about it because I put a stop to the Raptor attacks. What I love is honesty, first and foremost, because even Hannah, like we were going to soccer and she was playing soccer. She's like, yeah, I'll go. I was like, yeah, you don't listen. If you don't want to go, we're paying for this. So I'm not sure you don't have to do this. And so I was watching soccer today and she's, she's a really good athlete. She's pretty fast. And she's, she's like, a, you know, I've seen the crazy things where she climbs everything, but she's never really played soccer. And she's like, Dad, please, I'm really great at soccer. And she, she was playing with these other little girls who've been like playing like two and three years, like four days a week on these AYSO who can really handle the ball and step on it and pull it back. And, you know, she's, she's good, but she ha doesn't have the skill level yet. And at one point they were like playing crazy soccer and she was kind of standing in the corner, like pirouetting around, <laughs> like she wasn't part of the game at all. And I was like, you sure you want to do this? Because... If you don't want to, I, I, it's not, I couldn't care less. I hate the parents who were like, come on, you got to play some soccer. You know, you got to do this. My favorite are the parents who who think that they're playing for a college at the five, the U5 level, like under five, and they're screaming at their children. And meanwhile, I'm like, uh, my biggest chore today is to stop my child from attacking another child as a raptor. I'm not so sure we're scoring is even even something we're worried about today. Well, here's what I will tell you. Honestly, I feel like if he's if he's pretending to be a raptor, maybe he does have the killer spirit to be. Because a raptor, if a raptor was playing soccer, he'd be really good. Because they also really they hunt in teams, right? Don't they hunt in teams? Because he's like, oh, a smart packs, fan. yeah. They they hunt in packs. So maybe it wasn't his fault. Maybe the rest of his team. He was the lead raptor, and the other raptors weren't really climbing on board the premise of it. Because I mean, if you were playing a raptor in soccer, I'd be terrified. They're they're vicious animals. And he was. He was like screeching and everything. And I'm I like I'm like looking around as to like why I have to explain to other parents why my child is screeching and running like this, like going to jump on another kid. I mean, you think of the Karate Kid when he did the crane. Yeah. And he caught he caught the other dude off guard because the other dude was like crane and then kicked him in the face which apparently was an illegal maneuver but one now but maybe your son was doing raptor to kind of you know a diversion like you know it's like um Ra's al ghul and batman begins it's about a lot of it's about diversion and so maybe he's way ahead of the game and you need to catch up to him and you're you know what thinking about this you're probably right i need to change yeah. up my mindset and be a better coach well, I mean, the you know, look at the Toronto basketball team. They are the Raptors, and they they won. They won the they won it all like a year or two ago, right? So maybe maybe he's on to something, and you are maybe you're holding him back. All right, that's probably going to be the motto of this house. Your father is holding you back. That is honestly, <laughs> I think maybe we should hold some kids back at times, right? Where it's like you know, we help the kids who are terrible athletes, right, and push them up. 
to kind of join the pack. Maybe if, if one kid's that good of an athlete, we should push him back down and just go, look, dude, we don't need any exceptional people. Just, just fill in, fill the void. We had one little girl on our team who, honestly, like I was concerned about her well-being. Like she would run for approximately two minutes and not even really run more like a winded trot. And she would turn like beet red to the point that like I would look at the other co coach and be like, we should probably bench her for a little bit to rest because I was legitimately worried she was not going to make it through the, the four minute quarters that we were playing. Four minutes. Yeah. It's like four minutes. We switch them out every four minutes. Cause you can't, they don't focus longer than that. My daughter, she, who I, I don't know how she's not in good shape. She runs around all the time, but we went to the soccer thing and before the coach even got there, like we showed up and then her friends were running around on the field and she ran around for like 30 seconds. And then laid down on the sideline for like 20 minutes. Or so. <laughs> I'm like, really? You're seven years old. I don't. There, and there also is like water and snacks. It's like, I don't remember snacking and watering like they do. Like my daughter will be like, I'm starving. And I go, you don't, you don't really know what starving means. You all day snacks. They really like snacks. I've, I've kind of become like a snack butler. Every yeah. Day. Cause you had like, you had like, I remember your, like when you were in the other room, you had like the whole wall of snacks. It, and, and actually, they're almost gone, and so I got to go to wholesale. Uh, wholesale Costco is, is my favorite. So wholesale Costco has the big boxes of like things you would sell somewhere, like some little store or something. And so I just buy those, whether it's the Nutella or uh, or whatever snacks. That's the best part. Snack the snack time after is the best part of sports. Says Katie, I don't know about that. That is for the kids, especially in this area. The kids like the snacks for them is like. It's like it's like getting to heaven at the end of your life. Like that's like they worked uh, this whole game. Like they would do their life to get to the pearly gates of of to get like one of those uh, uh, a lunch a pizza lunchable or a lunchable of some sort. My kids, it's all. I mean, she even on the way home. Like we were coming home, and I had dinner already done because I knew we had the show. So I had like a rotisserie chicken, some cucumber, uh, avocado, some carrots, uh, and I had baked a sweet potato. And uh, and on the way home, she's like, I look in the back and she's got the Nutella with the little sticks. And I go, whoa, what are you doing? We're going home for dinner, you crazy, insane person. And she's like, well, I just have a little snack. And I go, yeah, I know how it works. You have the snack and then you don't eat the carrots and any of the vegetables. And then you are like, right after dinner gets thrown in the trash can. And she's like, I'm kind of hungry. Do it. Can I get another snack? And you're like, dude, dude. I see TV's Dave Schrader's showing his face into the room. Bring I, in. Josh Wolf is supposed to be here already, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He was supposed to be here. So what we can tell you about Josh Wolf is, I don't know, he has he has a lot of fans and he's really funny. He's a good friend, but he does a little show called High Live with Josh Wolf. And if you've watched it and you're not high, it's um, it's really funny. But if you're high and you're watching him high, it's ridiculously funny. But Josh is high. And so my I just texted him. I was like, hey, are you high? What happened? Where are you? So is he maybe, coming? Maybe Schrader will be our guest. I don't know. He hasn't texted me back. Do you remember me, David? Let's, do our, let's bring Schrader in anyway, because Schrader's had an interesting day. Ladies I and gentlemen, uh, from the Holzer Files, as seen on TV, television's Dave Schrader. Is he frozen? He's frozen. <laughs> Good Lord. Every week. This is honestly, this show is so much like parenthood. It's not even funny. Like we sit it's and we do all this pre-work and we get all this stuff going and we have all these bits and all these crazy things going. And then invariably there's a bad connection or Josh Wolf does not show at all. I when I he, he'll, you know, he's going to say, he's going to say, Oh, I didn't know it was live. Is it, was it live? Even though we were like, dude, we're live all the time. And what's that? directly in the email that we sent to him live right he on three, he has three kids how did that work i don't know honestly you know sometimes when you have guests anyway it's just annoying it's all about them i don't you know i have kids it, I, honestly the best part about this is is just chatting and not talking about letting it, it out <laughs> Yeah. How did your wife handle being alone with the girls this weekend? That's a fantastic question. Uh, oh, she was mom of the year. It was really funny. And she, would, so, uh, you know, for the last year she's been working and, and uh, I was out of work because I'm an actor and comic and the pandemic kind of put the kibosh on that. 
So uh, I didn't see her for like the year while I watched the, the kids. And then over the weekend, she sent me a photo like every four minutes of like, hey, we're making cookies. Hey, Claire's in the park on the bike. Hey, the kids are watching a movie. Hey. I was like, we get it. You're, yeah, we got it. You, you figured it out. It's all good. So she, I, honestly, it was kind of cool because she had a, she kind of had a girl, girl's weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Holzer file, Jamie, you're gorgeous, says the dude. Can, can send dude, send uh, send him the link. We should have, um, Taylor can come in too. Why don't, why don't we have a free-for-all and have Taylor? TV's Drave Schrader's here. What's happening, brother? Hey, my friend's just hanging out with my buddy Josh Wolf getting high. Woo! <laughs> You know what, everybody? We're just gonna start torturing uh, Josh Wolf from this thing. Um, I heard you kind of had a little bit of a crazy day. Anything you want to talk about? Holy cow! You know, as a parent, there are very few calls in life you don't want to get. Right? I mean, you want to hear from your kids. You want them to check in with you. You want to hear fun stories of their adventures around the world and their dates and what the grandchildren are up to. But the one call you don't want to get, Dad, I've been in an accident. And that's the call I got today. So luckily, I uh, was able to keep my heart in check. It was a spooky day, but my son, Linus, and daughter-in-law were, um, sorry, my cats decided to trash the place after I threw my Josh Wolf joint at him. Uh, my cat, yeah. uh, or, or my my kids were on their way to, to work this morning, and um, Minnesota drivers, what can I say? Uh, not my kids, but the uh, psychopath in front of them at a green light on an off ramp, just decided to lock up his brakes and they plowed right into the backside of them, crushing up the front of their car. And then the guy took off from Florida figures, Florida, man, what can we expect? And uh, they were rattled up. My, my son's leg and ankle are a little messed up. My poor daughter-in-law took some uh, abuse from the, <laughs> the uh, seat belt and from the airbags, but both of them are thankfully in great condition. My grandson Declan is doing great. So everybody's at home recuperating, but that was a, that was a touch and go moment for uh, grandpa Dave this morning. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Yeah. Well, you know what? Like you said, it all worked out in the end. Everybody's healthy, happy, safe, a little bumped and bruised. And if That's all it. we've got is a messed up car, I could care less. You know, I've, well, we always, say that, but okay. So now, all right, let's let's. Well, we say it because I don't have to buy him another car. <laughs> that's. But say you did have to buy him another car. I'd ground the shit out of both of them. Okay, that's what I'm. Yeah. Thinking. No. It, sit there once they go. Like my daughter, we we talked about that where my daughter cut her headphones, and she's like, "You're going to be mad at me," and I was like, "She was sobbing so much, I couldn't be mad at her." But in reality, I was super. Mad. Oh, sure. I was. Of course, I was super pissed. I had to go to Target that afternoon. See, listen, you've got to, we, we've, as parents, there's a certain level of, of power we have to give away. There's a certain level of experience we just have to realize we don't know. Like yes, all, all of it, all every of it. bit of it. I remember one day um, my ex called me upstairs. She's like, uh, Dave, come up here. And I come upstairs and there, when I open it, is uh, the hair massacre. Uh, that's all I can say. And there on the floor were all of their their dolls all the hair had been cut off of every doll in the house, <laughs> which is ingenious, right? Why? Because it distracted me from noticing that it started with them cutting each other's hair and it went horribly, horribly awry. So my daughter, who was about four at the time, convinces the three-year-old, if we just cut the hair off all of our dollies, daddy will just think it's our doll's hair. Except for my, my four-year-old had a big bald spot right up here and my other daughter's uh, kind of, I don't know... <laughs> Some art deco they went, uh, border. They went full two thousand seven, Britney, huh? Oh, it was it was crazy. But you know, so here was my two choices. Um, I I looked at him, I laughed, I shook my head, I said, "Guys, give me the scissors." They gave me the scissors. We talked about the danger of scissors, and then I uh, I called and got them into a hair salon, which cost a lot of money, but we got their hair fixed. They both looked like little Minnesota moms. That was the only way you could cut the hair. They had the little. It just looked like little. Uh, Minnesota mothers. I don't know how else to explain it, but they, they were adorable. Um, my ex-wife was not as, as uh, understanding. She got very mad. I'm like, listen, we've all been through this. How can you get mad at two little kids? This is just part of the growing up experience, cutting each other's hair. 
and uh, and they did it, and it you know, whatever it is, what it is. I thought it was cute and funny. I try not to get mad, and and there's yeah, I try to weigh those pros and cons when I come into conflict situations. Sometimes I explode like Vesuvius. Sometimes I just roll over and expose my belly for rubs. That's all. <laughs> I uh, I think. Well, Josh is texting me. Josh, Josh Wolf, some huge issues. Hold on, says <laughs> Josh. <laughs> Oh, we're going to light him up. Did so, you tell him I lived the hair apocalypse and a, a horrible car crash today and I'm here? Some huge issues. Hold on. That's I mean, listen, somebody better be dead. <laughs> Dave, uh, maybe he was the one that hit your family. Yeah, very well could be. Like, Here's what I think about on that. The run. Yeah. Is, is I'm starting to get to this point where it's like, hey, man, it's your life. I don't care what you look like. Right. Uh, it was kind of like, here's what I, I equated to Lori Laughlin. Uh, spending half a million dollars to get her kid who didn't even want to go to college to go to college. It wasn't for the kid. It was because as a parent, she wanted to tell people, my daughter's at USC, my daughter's this, my daughter's this. In the same way that as a parent, we want to show our child and go look at her beautiful hair. Even though the kid cuts her hair off, the kid doesn't care. The kid doesn't care at all. The parent, the only person who cares is the parent because then they have to walk around with this kid and and moms feel like they're being judged because other moms are going to be like, you let you you let your kid cut her hair. You're like, oh, no, you know what I mean. Listen, that's why I keep my head shaved. I really have long, luxurious locks. Um, but I just like my girls to realize this is what happens when you cut your own hair. So it's it's you know the temptation may be real, but the realization is worse. So don't do it. You guys don't look like you're buying that. Uh, no, 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 no. no it's, uh, oh, yeah, it's a choice. It's a choice for you. I get it. Have any of you guys ever had your kids attempt to leave home uh, and pack their bags and go? Yes. It happened yeah. to me this weekend. How did, how uh, did that work out for you? <laughs> I was, I was going to let him, I was going to tail him for a little while just to see where he went. And he I would have only respected to... that if you would have tailed him as Batman and been running around the <laughs> your neighborhood dressed fully as the dark Knight, watching. Get down. If I had more time, I totally would have done that. I think you know that I totally would have done that. Uh, so he grabbed a suitcase. He packed like two shirts, some shorts, a pajama, no underwear, no socks. All right. So he he's taking his, after dad. He gra- exactly. He grabbed his. He grabbed a pillow, his his best stuffed animal, and one dollar so that he had money to buy food. And we let him go. We let him go out the gate. And I, mm-hmm. I hid behind the shed and I was kind of watching him go down the street and he was outside and he just starts sobbing uncontrollably. And the neighbor lady goes, Jace, what's wrong? And he goes, my mom, and, my mom and dad threw me out and I don't have anywhere to go. I'm just Wait, alone now. Why does your son sound like Chris Griffin? <laughs> Like That's that. so weird, dude. I'm totally the opposite. Every morning I pack a bag for both of my kids. <laughs> I just leave them by the front door. And I, I crack the door open and then I just I look the other way and go, hey, I'm I don't know. It's your call. Whatever you think. My dad, when he had to get up early and make my lunch, he'd wrap it in a roadmap with a clearly marked route out of town. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, all of a sudden, when I, <laughs> my kids were out front and, and an uber pulled up i was like that might be for you i don't know yeah. I, there it might be, be an uber somewhere important lesson learned uh for jason gowan is that his son was uh thinking well enough ahead he had he had a pillow he had pajamas he had a change of shorts and two shirts in case it was a long week um and he had a dollar because without the dollar he would be, con- be considered transient and he could be locked up so okay. He was smart. That was that was good. Compelling news. Good job. So, what did you do? How did you uh, how did you shake him out of the uh, doldrums of uh, thinking he was thrown out? I made it look like he made the whole. I mean, he did make the whole thing up. I mean, we didn't we didn't lay it, we didn't send him away. That was his choice. So I came marching in. I was like, Jace, there you are. How dare you do this? Like likely story. We'll let DCFS sort this out for us, Jamie. I did. So my daughter, she was, she was like, she went out. I, she goes, can I go out front? And I was like, no, no, we're going to have dinner. And she went out front. I locked the door behind her. I <laughs> just left her out front. Wow. Yeah. Like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> I, go, I told you not to go out there, dude. That's on you. That's, that's, that's a you a- problem. <laughs> he Fred, he Fred Flintstoned his kid. I am such, 
he did for I really, I don't know. I mean, they're either going to turn out to be absolute psychopaths or they'll be well-adjusted kids. I, I have no idea yet. I'm thinking well, my, the first thing. Yeah. Well-adjusted psychopaths. They're yeah, the next yeah, Patrick. Yeah. They're the next American psycho Patrick. Then they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll be president of the United States of that. That's that true. Point. I, uh, my two daughters, my two daughters decided to leave home in the dead of winter because they were mad at me for something ridiculous. Like I didn't let them have extra zebra cakes for dessert or some nonsense. How dare you? I ate them all. There was no more to give. Yeah. Sorry. You know, it wasn't you weren't letting them have them. You just right. didn't want any uh, left. Right. Uh, dad's licking the the plastic a wrap, you know, rationing problem. Right. So um, they packed their bags and uh, took off and it's the dead of winter. My daughter's in her pajama pants and a tutu. And a jacket uh, with a, I think a, a, um, a turtle, not a turtleneck, but a, uh, what do you call it? Tank top. Uh, then the older one who dressed the younger one, <laughs> she goes out, she's got her hat on. She's got no jacket because she made sure to give the good jacket to her little sister. So, so that was a, at least a sign of compassion. That's long gone now that they're teenagers, but uh, they, they made their way out. My oldest daughter, Kayla goes, um, Dad, do you, do you know the girls are running away? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, should we go get them? I'm like, it's cold out there. Let's see how far they get. And those little jerks left. And they were like down around the corner, out in the street. It's like a CCR song. And uh, <laughs> quoting CCR, holy yeah. cow, old. They you really are, are high. Did they make it to the corner there. in Winslow, Arizona, or did they yeah. get that far? No, no, no. They stopped in Phoenix, but they uh, they got to the. Huh. They got to the I'm corner. To get and to Phoenix, you know. They, right. They were waiting for the traffic to stop so they could keep making their way. So finally, I, I came driving up in the car. I go, roll down the window, and I go, hey, pretty cold. Can I give you a ride? And Ripley goes, my little one. She's like, yeah. <laughs> and Pacey goes, no, we're fine. And she drags me. And they're like literally like four and five years old at this time. And my oldest daughter, Pacey, is still that way. She just will not yield no matter how wrong she is in a situation. Oh. She will dig her heels in. My other one is just very, I'm sorry, let's make this right. <laughs> She's the peacekeeper in my house. Isn't it weird that you get one of each of those? It's so odd because I'm the same. Claire's the peacemaker. Hannah, we would put her in the cor corner. And then after a while, she just, actually, she won't stay in. And finally, I get her to stay in there. I how, glue her to the wall or something. And then finally, I let her out. I go, okay, you can come out now. And she goes, Ooh. and she's in the corner. And so she sat in the corner for like an extra 20 minutes or something. And, and I finally had to talk to her and go, look, you can, I don't know if you think you're punishing me. I, I'm confused by your logic on this problem, but I've said you can come out. You're If you sit in there all night, best night of my life. You're not, this is a present you're giving me by staying in the corner. I don't know what to tell you. And she then she was like, she doubles down. I'll stay here longer. You're not following the logic of what's happening here. I don't think I don't think you're following the logic. No, I know. She, so maybe she, she was showing you. She's like, you are so dumb. The funny thing is, you think you have the say. I'm staying where I want to stay. She and did. that was the end of it. You, you, you had no power here. Right? It was like it was like that scene in Fright Night when Roddy McDowell holds up the cross and and the vampire touches it, and you have to believe in this for it to work. And right, she right. knew. Oh, it. that's such a good line, too. Yeah. Because oh, if you got to believe in it. Yeah. So she it. just dug in and she looked at you and she's like, What you gonna do? <laughs> you put so me we covered CR, we covered uh, Fright Night from 1980. Mm -hmm. so. Sure. <laughs> Which you just called this like flashback. And I talked about Lethal Weapon earlier. We're just. As it should be. I, I will tell you, I was distracted uh, the other day. I woke up, I, I bought a movie. I. I'm an 80s guy. I, I've unabashedly, I love 80s movies and entertainment. I love the Crocodile Dundee movies, even Crocodile D Dundee in Los Angeles. And there was a new movie out, and it's called like The Excellent Mr. Dundee, starring Paul Hogan, John Cleese, and Chevy Chase. I'm like, count me in. I buy it. The whole concept is everybody's trying to get him to do a new Crocodile Dundee movie. Okay. He is 80 years old in this. Doesn't look much different than he did when he was 50 doing Crocodile Dundee. He's just got a little bit more of the rounded shoulders and a little slower gait. But that's it. It was charming, but horribly made. It was like the three of us decided, come on, guys, let's make a movie. And we took our video camera out and just called in favors from, uh, you know, some of our celebrity friends. And uh, there were there were some moments that were cute, but it, 
it was, you know, like John Cleese is an Uber driver now. He's, uh, but he's John Cleese. He's just out driving people around and uh, leaves. John Cleese. Yes. As, and the cops are in a chase and you find out he might not legally be driving in our country, but it's just a great little bit, but it was such a disappointment overall that I really hate that I saw this movie. Have you ever seen one of those? You, you see it and you hate the fact that you've seen it because now it's kind of like getting to the last bite of the cupcake and finding a pubic hair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> that point went home. Yeah. Oh wait, I'm the only one that that's happened to whatever Jason. Doesn't that never happen to me? Ever. I love that you think that I've looked at the cakes long enough to ever notice if there's a hair. You have to you have to chew it to do that. It just goes straight down. You now some people can open their throat and drink a beer. Jason can do it with a cupcake. I've seen him with, actually, with, actually, with a straw. Probably... It's amazing. Straight down the chute. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. A, it left a bad taste in my mouth. So if you see the excellent Mister Dundee out there, don't. I bought don't, it for a buck ninety nine at Savers. That should have been my clue. That should have tipped you off, yeah. Well, but I, I'm yeah. shocked you bought. I haven't bought a movie in so long that I can't. And my kids wanted to buy Raya, right? They wanted to buy Raya mm -hmm. and the New Dragon, which comes out in a couple of weeks. So, our neighbor uh, called us one night and she bought it. This is like two months ago. Did you get? Did you kids watch Raya, Jason? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So the neighbor bought it and she watched it. So they owned it. Right. So they watched it there the first night we made popcorn. We sent treats over. They were super cool. We tried to chip in, but they were like, no, 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 it's our treat or whatever. And then another night they they have a little boy who's a year or two younger than uh, Claire. And so they had a second night because kids, you know, kids like to watch it again. And so they went over there and they did it again. And then like this past weekend, my kids were like, can we buy Raya? I was like, dude, we're so close. We're so close to free Raya. That we're not, I go, and it's like 20 bucks or 30 bucks. I go, we're not buying Raya. You've seen it twice first and losing their mind. I never buy, ever buy movies, ever. I haven't bought a movie since Blockbuster, man. Well, that's because you make Tacoma uh, FD money. I, uh, I, don't. I don't spend it. I don't spend it. <laughs> no, right. You, you make, you make big bank. So, uh, so no, that means you, you have probably we good. Have Netflix, HBO, we have all the channels. Oh, what's the problem with that? The problem is when the internet crashes, you got nothing, son. N U T H A N, nothing. I could be off on that. I'm not sure. Yeah, I feel like that's. It was a little off. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like you went too far on that one. The internet. <laughs> no, the internet sucks. Uh, I, you I, I, like the guy here. who might have just brought down the. Did you do the pipeline? Were you the guy who hacked into the pipeline? You seem to see, you seem to know the internet pretty well. I don't, uh, I don't. Uh, Hey, can I ask you? I, this is, I, I've always talked to Don Wilson. Here's a, here's a question: Can is there a way we could make some things that are not connected to the internet? Is that a possibility, or does everything? Yeah, they're called on DVDs. <laughs> no, he's is not that, paying. He's not paying attention. They're called DVDs or Blu-ray discs. No, I, yes, that's true. But I mean, like, it's like, do does our car really need to be connected to? Like, does every do you have to be able to turn your car on from the airport so you can heat it up before you hey, get out to the parking lot? Jason, Jason, Tacoma I, FD money. Yeah, I my we're, I'm still, I still have I still have a small brontosaurus running my engine in my car. I gotta I get out there, and drink it. dude. I'm old school frugal. I'm, I say I'm frugal. My wife says I'm cheap, but I, I, I don't. Well, we had a huge fight this week because she went. Do you know Erwan? Erwan supermarket? No. Mm -mm. No. Again, no. we don't have Tacoma FD money. Me, well, I don't either anymore because uh, she goes to Air One, which is like this. It's like Whole Foods on steroids. Like if, if you could make a Whole Foods that was even more expensive, it would be called Air One. Uh, e -R -E -W. They're never going to sponsor us now, by the way. Uh, so she bought was that, was that on the table? Like, did, they, did you talk to them recently? This is, yeah, I was speaking with them and I go, no, no, you're, you're out of our price range. I mean, talk to me, other people who are, who are, messaging me because my wife and I have the biggest fights. She'll buy like a little, did a little packet of raspberries for like $9 where I'm like, are you, in, are you clinically insane? Those are two for five bucks at Ralph's. We're not, we're not doing it, man. I can't, she'll buy like a thing of grapes and they, listen, they're good grapes. I'm not going to lie to you, but it's like 15 bucks for a little bag of grapes. And I'm going, I'm losing my mind. Like I don't, I don't usually buy it at Costco because it's like, you, you never go through it. It rots. It's not great, but you got to find that middle ground. Like, like a Trader Joe's or a Ralph's, you can't go to Whole Foods for all your stuff. It's just too expensive. Uh, I will tell you, I agree with you on that. My wife is the kind that will go 
you know, I'm, I'm getting organic raspberries. Aren't they all organic? Don't they all grow from the ground? No, no, no. There's no pesticides. There's no sprays. This is so much better. What, but the one, one thing I will treat myself to, I don't care. I, I will pay $28 for a half pound container of cotton candy flavored grapes. I never even heard of those. Mm-hmm. Is that to a which, thing? Shh, shh, listen, you can physically hear me getting fatter and my heart seizing up oh. as I talk about it. Is yeah, it, cotton candy grapes. Is, is it what? covered in cotton candy? No, no. Somehow, through the magic of science, or perhaps voodoo, they have infused the flavor of cotton candy into the grape. So it looks like a grape. It squeaks like a grape, but it tastes like cotton candy. Dude, you're pronouncing the word wrong. It's not grape. It's vape. It's oh. cotton candy yeah. vape. Yeah. No. And by that the way, so that I've heard of. Totally oh, I've heard. God. No, they are amazing. Cotton candy grapes. It's one of the, the few things in life all that right. I allow myself to have besides sure. all the zebra cakes. Uh, How high are you right now, Dave? He's imagined, <laughs> he's imagined the grapes. That are I'm not candy. imagining grapes. Honey, bring me the cotton candy grapes. Apparently, Josh will be back awesome. next week. He goes, some huge issues. Uh, hold on. Had a serious issue with a neighbor. I hope his neighbor's not watching this, by the way. Or, or there's going to be a shooting his, probably in Nashville tonight. Was his, was his, his neighbor bogarting the J or what? Was that oh, the no. But apparently something went down with the neighbors. <laughs> you know, I, it is funny because we'll, we'll have him. He'll have, obviously, he's not going to make tonight, it sounds like. But he'll come next week. I have the greatest neighbors. I've heard the worst nightmare neighbor stories, lawsuits, like insane stories of fences and nuts. But I am lucky that I have, we have like, that's our village. We have amazing neighbors and I feel blessed, but I'm also shocked when people who live next to each other can't make it work. Have you had that? I don't know. We're the problem in our neighborhood, so I'm not really sure. (laughs) Our place looks like the Munsters. We've got a dead yard, dead trees, bats hanging around the attic. So people avoid me. And then I've got the, the darkness radio plates on my car. People just... That is true. Halloween. But even if you were like that, I would, I would, I would talk to you as a human. But I think that that's the problem. People don't communicate. You do give like a weird, creepy hearse, like a, ro- a hot rod hearse out in front of your car, like the monsters. No, but I do wear a pinstripe suit and wear a little mustache and call my wife Tish in front of them. Is that weird? <laughs> do you have the big loudspeaker that just plays the music? Like, do, 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 Yes. Uh, are you the? Are you guys the weird? I'm like. No. I'm aggro. No. I'm like the, the crazy aggro guy that they go, like they see me and they jokingly go, get off my lawn. Like that's who I am. But it's in a likable old curmudgeonly way, like, a, you know, like a Walter Matthau way. Not not so much Archie Bunker, but wait, more wait, of a- they, they see you and they tell you to get off their lawn? Well, they say it to me like that's what I would say when they're my oh, they, gotcha. they, okay. they I'm the I'm the get off my lawn guy. Yeah, uh, in the neighborhood, but I'm also like the first one to go. Sure, take take uh, take my lawnmower. Um, yeah, I do need to. Le- I'll lift your piano. We like we have the greatest group of neighbors, and it's really really super helpful. And they all have kids, and there's no no, no animosity between any of the parents. Like people have come over and done unbelievable helpful things with everybody in the group. I was just kind of in a luck. And honestly, we, we thought about moving up years ago and we love the neighbors so much that it kind of kept us where we were. Well, if that's not a ringing endorsement for Scientology, I don't know what is. I'm glad that you're you saying is you. we all got rid of our feet, feet on, feet on, right? We got, yeah, yeah, sure. I, did, I held the meter and one of the neighbors was like, he, he got them all, but I did. My spirit went back into the volcano and now I am, I don't know. I don't, I'm, it's, I'm, I don't, I know. I know as much about that as I know about Catholicism and I'm a Catholic. So I'm, mm. Six out of nine of our neighbors are pretty cool with us. Three, it was two, but now after Jace left home and uh, the other neighbors, we're on the, the touch and go right now. That felt yeah. too specific, didn't it, Dave? Like he has, has a list on the refrigerator. Okay, so six, <laughs> six out of nine, not six great. Out of, six, like, wait, it, it, six, it's still, still six. I, it's still right. six. Wait, but, up uh-huh. to seven. It's seven now. I'm crossing them off as we go. Yeah, we had uh, we had some problem neighbors in my last. I, I rented a townhouse, and we had some neighbors that were um, less than desirable. Is all I'll say. Uh, and they one day we were. I, I could hear commotion going on outside. My daughter Pacey's just standing there watching the neighbor kids throw rocks at the front of their house. And I lean out the window and I go, "Get in here." 
And she goes, why? And I said, because they're going to break a window. She goes, but I'm not throwing rocks, dad. I go, right. But you're going to be the one that takes the blame for it. <laughs> sure enough, 10 seconds later, they scatter like cockroaches. My daughter comes walking over to the house and I'm like, see, aren't you glad dad told you to get over here and uh, take care? Uh, because this is, this is what happened. Sure enough, the neighbor's not going to, your kid was throwing rocks at my house. I'm like, no, I watched this happen out my window. The neighbor then calls the cops on me. And it, I was like, <laughs> what is going on? The cops are like, well, the funny thing is these neighbors have trouble with everybody in the neighborhood. We have absolutely no faith that what they're telling us is true, but we have to stop here. So let's just talk for a few more minutes and we're going to shake our fingers and then we're going to leave. And I said, okay. And that's what they did. Um, but thankfully we moved out of there and uh, we did. I th I'm pretty sure we had a vampire living on the other side of our townhouse. We never saw him. The only time we'd see him is he would pull in at night, go into the house. You would hear banging, sometimes yelling, and then he'd be gone again for like weeks. I didn't know if it was like a torture porn cell from Saw or a vampire living in there. My kids were freaked out every time they saw the guy. And he only showed up at night once in a blue moon and did something horrible in the home Dude, next to us. Please. That's a little weird. Once but in a blue gave, moon. That's he not made, a vampire. That's a wolf man. Get your, uh, get your mythology right. I will say, though, he did make the best sausage Paranormal in investigator, my yeah. ass. Oh, he made it. Dude, what was that movie, Motel Hell? Is that what that was? Yes, yeah, oh, that was. Yeah. Or uh, at, at, Delicatessen. At Delicatessen. Let's see yeah. if we can keep naming movies where they eat people. Soil, uh, Soil and Green, three. Soil I got green. three. Yeah, you do. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, Diary of the Dead, Survival of the Dead. <sighs> the Road. No, that's with Bette Midler. That was a, a movie that was loosely based on the life of Janis Joplin. She eats Janis Joplin at the end, if you oh, watch. That's right. I remember. The end. No, the red. Wait, no, no. Cormac McCarthy. Oh, there's another one. There's something about the bone, uh, the devil's bone. Bone. Oh, uh, that's a point. That's, that's uh, an adult film. The yeah. devil's bone. Oh, there that is. is. How about that's Witness Red Infection? Porn. Witness what? Infection. Car Carlos's movie, Witness That's Infection, right. another uh, movie. Uh, uh, Rain yeah, Range 15, guys. I, I, I will tell you one thing. We're going way off in weird tangents here, but if you guys want to see a great zombie movie completely overlooked by everyone, it's called Fido, and it stars Billy Connolly and uh, what is it? Kate, Not Kate Moss. What is her name? Trinity from... Uh, Carrie Moss. Yes, Carrie, Carrie Moss. Moss. Carrie Ann Moss. It, it's set to this... It, then you have to see it. I'm not even going to tell you. It's a zombie movie. Do not watch the trailer because it ruins it. Watch the movie and you're welcome. That's all I'm going to say. Fido. F-I-D-O. Fido. I love Billy Connolly. I love oh, Billy yeah. So he's the best. Yeah. Billy Connolly. Yeah. Um, that's funny, man. Yeah. I have been watching. Um, yeah, dude. Honestly, when the kids go down at night, I'm like. I mean, I can't be the only one who's like, I did a joke the other night. I go, uh, I was talking about the quarantine. I said, you know, the, the, the best thing about the quarantine is at least, at least I got to spend it with my best friend, my Sony 70 inch television, who he and I really get along. My YY is like, I hate that joke. So, <laughs> but honestly, I don't know about you guys, but you know, listen, I, I'm not, I don't gamble. I don't watch video games. I don't, I don't cheat. Yes. Fucking watch television, man. That's one one. I mean, can you give me one thing? And also, it's like if I played the Beatles like every Sunday morning, you wouldn't be like, oh, you're playing the Beatles again. But God forbid if I watch Casino and she's like, well, oh, you watch you've seen Casino a billion. What you can watch this again? Yeah, it's art. I'm looking at it, I'm taking it in. Did you marry Rodney Dangerfield? Yeah. Uh, you're watching Casino again. I don't get no respect. <laughs> get in my boom. <laughs> I don't watch her shopping for shoes and go, oh, you're shopping for shoes again? I don't do that. Dude. Maybe you should. Maybe I should, man. Yeah. I love the thing. But is she the Jason? only one who's giving you shit about it? Uh, the television? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but now she's kind of said it enough times that the kids, the kid, you know, like kids, they uh, they mimic sometimes. They go, hi, daddy, you watching television? Yeah. Yeah, I am watching TV. You want to make your own fucking lunch? You can shut up. This is daddy's research. And don't tell your mother you watch television. Remember in the old days? Like it's it's lucky now because televisions are cold. You remember the old days when you, they would walk in and they put their, you know, you could tell if somebody was watching the TV, you'd put your oh, TV is warm. What's happening here? Now they're all cold. Whoever did that, brilliant. Brilliant. L LEDs, right? Isn't that what we have to thank for that? The yeah. LED lights inside. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Very nice. Beautiful. You know, 
there, there's things that we look back on now and you think, what will my kids not know the joy of? Like in my world, there was nothing better than on TV, which was the first kind of pay TV programs. And, but you know, at night it was scrambled porn. So if you were right and you could fidget with that knob in the back, just enough, sometimes you got slanted green yeah. boobs for, for yeah. like hours. It was amazing. They'll never know that, that kind of pleasure. They'll never get to know what it's like to try to finagle. Now everything is available. So they turn on the TV oh. and Dude. yeah. Was it pleasurable? Cause like, it was so stressful, like trying to get it just right. It was like, you really had to earn your porn back. Then. I was only, I was only using one hand, Jay. So it didn't really bother me as much. What were you doing with it? Oh, you're a righty. Nice. I know you're righty now. Yeah. Hey, uh, here's, and I think Dave, I think that's a fantastic point about today's ch child is that there's no, um, there's no effort necessary. They're just stumbling through it. Like even today, my kids, I was trying to get them ready for soccer. They were watching uh, a show. Back in my day, my mother, my mother would have been just like, get up and go do this. I was like, pause the TV, go do this, come back. You'll pick it up right where it was. You know, back in, back in our day, if you wanted to see a movie and it was on Thursday at 8 p.m., you better be sitting in front of your television at Thursday at 8 p.m. or you ain't seeing that show. And it was like it never was on again. Now it's like, oh, you missed it. No, you didn't. You didn't miss anything. You, you There's nothing ever that's been missed anymore. Nothing. No. Painful. Yeah. Oh, and you know, their, their problem is going to be that everything they've ever said or taken photographs lives in perpetuity somewhere on the internet. They're, they're every mistake. Thankfully, our mistakes are here. They're locked back in the past. And really, we only hear about them when friends from our past or relatives tell the stories. But again, you can always say that they over-exaggerate, right? And and it, there's enough question there. With our kids, they're not going to have that kind of uh, get-out-of-jail-free card. Everything they've ever done exists somewhere. And they're dumb enough to think, we don't know how to find it. Well, I, I mean, nowadays, you just Google their name. Like the woman who was in the park who, like, uh, yelled at the African American guy about like he, uh, I'll call the police and tell them, and he was filming it. If that woman ever goes for a job, which they're gonna Google her immediately for the rest of her life, that is which. It does the punishment fit the crime? I don't know, but I don't know. It's this tenuous thing of like, I mean, can people learn? Because all of a sudden you get these baseball players who are like they when they were fifteen they did something stupid, and uh, it's gonna haunt them for the rest of their lives. Yeah. And, and here's the new thing. I don't know if you guys saw this. They were talking about it on the news recently. There's this new service, and I, I can't remember the name. It's like Pi Eye or something. But what you do is you go to like pieye.com, and you could take a picture of your daughter and upload it. And it will search everywhere on the internet, even the dark web. And it will bring you back any picture where your daughter's face is in it, which is good for numerous things. You can find anything that they've hidden out there. Sure. You can find anything that's being passed around in bad places. It's pretty incredible, but there is no hiding anymore. There's no discreet Jason and Dave hiding in the garage looking at, you know, Jugs magazine and we get away with it because we hide it again. You, Dave. Yeah, you should. But now you can't get away. Everything is there. That's that's a very scary, very weird yeah. aspect of life that I, I, I can't impress enough upon my children. And I keep begging, I'm like, please, you don't realize everything's going to come back at you. Now I'm even watching. You don't even have to post it. They'll hack like the celebrities. They hack into their phone and took them off private phones and took yeah. it from the cloud or something. They never posted it. They were stolen. And once it's yeah. stolen and it's out there. So even if you just take it and hold it, but the problem is Dave, if, I mean, I don't know if I would ever do that for my kids because I don't want that. I don't want the image in my head. I don't want to see it. It's like George C. Scott back in hardcore when he goes to find his daughter. Yeah. Again, this movie from the seventies or something. He, he, she gets lost in the world of porn or whatever. And he has to find her. And he, he sits in the movie theater and he sees her on the screen and you're like, I don't, I don't want to, I'd rather not know. I'd rather just yeah. be blind to it. Not me, baby. I won't, I'm going to Liam Neeson this thing because if my kids ever vanish, I will find them. I've got like the bat computer set up in my room. I will be toggling pictures. If they show up in Nantucket on an AM PM grocery store, I will find them. Jamie. Well, at least now I know if my kids go missing, I'm going to call you. Yeah. Because <laughs> you apparently have a very special set of skills. Honestly, if the Joker's right, don't ever do anything you know, that you're good at for free. So you could make a lot of money doing that. Yeah, or for zebra capes. I don't know if you picked up on that yet, but I'm pretty easily purchased. 
Is that right? <laughs> if it's one thing I learned this week, it is the zebra cakes are like the key to your heart. Dude, there's something sugary demonic about them. I don't know well, what it I is. Cotton candy grapes. Do you I know have, what the I have they, stuff like that? Sure. Yeah. A couple things that I'll spend my money on. Yeah, I like the yeah. they have those uh crazy giant mandarin oranges and gilsons or like the heirloom tomatoes where you're like, is that twelve dollars for that tomato? And you're like, you eat every oh. yeah, of course I can do that. But I mean you can't with kids especially, dude. They can eat, you know, I lived on uh, Spam and mac and cheese as a kid, and I survived. So they don't need $9 raspberries from Gilson's. No, but I, Jason, does your heart break a little bit that I'm talking like zebra cakes? He's talking mm, giant mandarin oranges and tomatoes. That's his big give himself. Oh, I like, oh, don't I, give me. I went into a state of euphoria when he said mac and cheese, and I stopped listening. <laughs> I do. When I go to Victor Benet's, I get a little rum boba. And if I, uh, I'll spend money on like a nice, like a nice Amaro or a nice whiskey or something. I'll spend. Mm. Or a I'm a hot dog aficionado. In Minnesota, we have a place called The Weenery, and it is a very fancy hot dog restaurant. <laughs> Why do you guys look like you're like in a J.C. Penney's photo studio? What's going on with your backdrops? <laughs> Thank you, Uncle Rico. I like it. You guys are good. Okay, so we're going to all do that for the one seat. That's it. Who got the picture? We'll freeze frame it. Um, we clip it. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the great thing about Josh Wolf, by the way, apparently there's a college student living next door, and uh, she she cut herself, uh, like, real bad in the kitchen. So I think, it, I don't know, maybe maybe she was cutting lemons and she cut her head off or something. I don't know, something happened. Well, I, we'll hear about it next week because we... Cut, we cutting weed and something went horribly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> You're breaking up the crystal meth and a piece shot up in her eye. Oh, he is horrible. In, he's, oh, in, the worst. he's outside of Nashville. You hate to see that happen. Yeah, I uh, life is crazy. But hey, man, you know what? I, I'm hoping the next generation kind of reclaims the identity of finding and having fun again. I don't want to sound like the three old guys that are, eh, you know, we, we've turned into Statler, Waldorf, and Astoria, right? We're, we're just the three grumpy old men shaking our fist about what the kids are missing out on. But I do mourn for them for that. And I hope that my grandchildren find that joy of playing again and, and just involving and engaging. And I give you a lot of credit, Jason. You are one of the best dads I've ever seen. You engage your kids' imagination button like nobody I've ever seen and that you have got every costume made for them and that you are, dude, that is so phenomenal. I applaud that because uh, I was too busy watching Tacoma FD to pay attention to my kids. Uh, new season's coming out this fall. Actually, I think Lemmy and Heffernan might come on here in the next in the next few weeks. I've, I've recently Get out of here. Lemmy almost Lemmy was texting me while I was in um in uh, La Jolla, and I was like, "Dude, come down to a guest set." He's like, "Let me see what I can do," but he he couldn't make it work. But he was gonna just drive down for the night and come hang out in La Jolla. They're funny standups too. So yeah, maybe we gotta come do Acme, man. Yeah, please. You know, there's yeah. plenty of comedy shops here in Minnesota. I'd love for you guys to come on out and yeah. we'll have a good time. Uh yeah, just having fun, man. That's that's what it's all about. Speaking of having fun, how about this? This is a weird bit from my childhood, right? I grew up, again, TV-related, the monkeys, man. I loved staying home to watch the monkeys after school, and I loved the music, the hijinks. The, I went to the 20th anniversary concert back in 1986. This year is the 35th anniversary of their 20th anniversary. I'm going to see the Monkees' farewell tour. Mickey and Mike, the only two that are left. I'm going to yeah. see them in Chicago and in Minnesota just to go see their last. I've seen like every iteration of them possible, and it's been uh, it's been great. So I'm going to go watch them fade off into the sunset together in their final so tour. Is, but is there like a hologram of Davy Jones and Peter Tork that performs? No, them or? it's it's sad, but you know, I mean, they're still joyous. It's such great Ooh, upbeat. They music. have. I mean, they just. You, I mean, it's like Queen or something with Adam Lambert. You can still, the music's still the music, and it's... Well, yeah. Mickey and Mike sang a lot of the songs as well, sure. so it's... Sure. And then what they really did nicely was the song Daydream Believer, which was Davey's. When Davey passed away, they turned it over to the audience, so they play it, and the audience sings Daydream oh, Believer to them. that's cool. Which was, which was really beautiful, kind of a cool little... Uh, I know the opposite. I don't... Listen, I paid you to sing. I didn't come to sing. I want you to do your job. You, I'm, I'm going to go to the, uh, that's why you don't like uh, hecklers in the audience, right? This is my job. I'm up here. Let me do this for you. 
I always, I always found that funny when the, you know, if I wanted to hear the guy next to me sing it, I, I would go to the karaoke bar, dude. I, you know, came to see you sing it, cover it all. I sing with my head tipped up to the sky when I'm at concerts because I don't want to be that guy behind your ear, right? Cheer up, sleepy Jean. Oh, what can it mean? Right? Because there's nothing worse than that guy. I didn't even like. I didn't even like you doing that bit. That was right. horrific. That's my point. Is you don't want to hear yeah. that. So I try to sing up to this to the heavens so that I don't do that to people at a concert. I was just talking to my buddy works at the Hollywood Bowl, and I was talking to him, and they just reopened, uh, and so they're doing shows for the summer. And um, I don't know about you guys, but honestly, getting out and doing the shows in La Jolla and just being around people lately has been like like the world got back to somewhat normalcy. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm excited. This weekend, I'll be at Mansfield, Ohio, at the Ohio State Reformatory. Uh, not doing time, but I will be there with other paranormal investigators for a big Parasycon. And uh, we're going to be out there. There's still tickets if people want to come on out and hang out. Parasycon, P-A-R-A-P-S-Y-C-O-N. And you'll find us. Uh, and then in two weeks, Jason and I are going to be out at uh, Gettysburg. Yeah, we're gonna, and we're going to be doing our very first live show of the Parents Lounge right there. At, I am uh, I am zooming in for that one. Hey, that Mansfield, Ohio is is that where they shot Shawshank? Yes, Mansfield Reformatory. Yeah, I went there. Play. And and shooting. Air Force One, the scene when they're in Russia and they've got that's the line in it. That that's up in their little area as well too. They filmed that in uh, in Mansfield. There's a lot of cool I was stuff shooting there. something in Ohio. I mean, no, I was doing, maybe I was doing the funny bone. And the guy was like, hey, you want to go to it? And I was like, yeah. Uh, and you know, this is crazy story. The guy across the street uh, was an art director. Mm -hmm. And he built, he mirrored all those. He built the interior of the Shawshank. So I had gone to the real place where they shot the exterior stuff. And then I went to, uh, he, in his house, I was like, you did? He, he just pulled out all the artwork. And he had, he they had built all the levels of the oh, interior. Wow. And That's I was cool. like, I mean, it's still a classic. And today I was reading that Kevin Costner had turned down the part of Andy Dufresne. Know. I, you know, I can't see him doing that role, though. I think I can. He would have been, he would have been fine. But Tim Robbins. I don't know. Tim Robbins owned it. You know, I because you needed somebody that was good but wasn't going to overshine the rest of the story. Yeah. And Tim Robbins really, it, Costner was too big, I think, to be in that role. I think we've covered uh, almost every movie from the 80s. It's, it's been a good run of movie coverage. <laughs> That's not true. We didn't talk about Strange Brew yet. Or oh. Gremlins. Well, he just got punched in the face in New York, right? <laughs> didn't he? Oh, God, he did, yeah. yeah. Rick Moranis, unbelievable. That's how, that's how the world has changed, by the way. Can we all just say it's like, like somebody was like, you know what? I'm Rick Moranis has it coming. That dude, that's <laughs> how angry the world is. When somebody's punching, it's like punching Mr. Rogers at this point, where you're like, wow, yeah. why would you hit Rick Moranis out of everyone on earth? That's the dude who you're like... I'm done with your face, Miranda. <laughs> he seems like the, the nicest guy on the planet. Uh, yeah, that was brutal to to hear, but thankfully he's okay now. I don't know if we'll ever see him come out of retirement. I wonder if he's... He's, he's doing the Disney Ghostbusters? Plus show. No, he's doing the Disney Plus uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids reboot. He's going to really? be... Yeah, he's doing that. Well, since we're doing our movie run, we should we should wrap pretty soon. We're, we, we always say we're going to be only an hour. and then be, But honestly, it's so much fun that I never want to get off the thing. But we lost one of the all-time greats today. Charles Grodin passed away. Oh, yeah. 86 years old. So um, maybe each of us will pick uh, one of our favorite uh, Charles Grodin appearances. Midnight Run. I, well, Midnight Run. Yeah. yeah. With, so with De Niro. That that scene so in the in the train car when he's like, hey, Jack, it's a good-looking chicken. Just the whole delivery. Charles Grodin was so great in everything. Everything. And, and he was so subdued that he could just play humor – in such an elegant, I don't know, is that a right term for comedy? Elegant? He was elegant in the way he could turn it and kind of like a Cary Grant. You could, it, it's subtlety that made him so nuanced in what he did. I can't, I don't know if he knows about me, Jack. I can't, I can't fly. I still say that when I get on planes. I do that. <laughs> I can't, I don't know if he knows about me. I can't, I can't, I can't fly. I'm not going to make it. I can't fly. <laughs> the great Muppet Capers. Right? He did this every time too. He goes, he goes, why don't you, you get the steak, you know what? I'm gonna get the lobster and we'll do a little we'll do a little surf and turf. <laughs> I love that movie. It still it still holds up too. It's so good. So good. All right, Jason. Jason uh I, I said the great Muppet Capers, my favorite, because that was like when, when I was a kid, that was like 
He was the greatest bad guy in that. Always good. And obviously, uh, he, you know, he was supposed to be the graduate. Did you know that? He turned it down. It was, it, it was supposed to be him over Dustin Hoffman. Burt and, Ward, too. Yeah, was, I didn't know Burt Ward, but I knew uh, Charles Grodin. and he always regretted it. And uh, they weren't offering enough money. He was this like low budget new director bullshit movie, and he was like, "I'm not doing that crap." And he turned it down. Beethoven says when he uh, here's my here's my pick, kind of obscure. Heaven can wait. Yes. Oh, and Diane, he, all day I couldn't stop thinking about it, even though of course Midnight Run was the first to pop. But Heaven can wait with Warren Beatty. I just remember as such a seminal film as a kid. I just yeah. and it's, of course a remake of Here Comes Mr. Jordan. With James Mason, and I just loved it. And Charles Grodin and Diane Cannon in the other room. Every time they think they've killed him, and they didn't. Yeah, it's Charles Grodin, so like so great, so great. So, yeah. well, we've lost a lot of entertainers again in the last year here. It's yeah, it's going to be like people are going to forget. Like there were so many people going this past year that this is like from years from now, they'd be like, Oh, is he, Oh, he did go that year. And that's right. The, uh, oh. did you watch the Oscars? I watched the in memoriam part. And it was no. like, it was like three hours long. It was just like, wow. and it was, nobody held for like, everyone just was like one second, one second, one second. It was like gone, 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 gone. Yeah. Well, I don't know that anything's going to ever beat 2016. You know, I think this is what endeared my wife to me, right? We lost David Bowie, Prince, Right, uh, Glenn Fry, not Glenn right. Fry, uh, not Glenn Fry. Who's the other guy? Yeah, it was Glenn Fry. Glenn there Fry. was all these amazing musicians, and then what happens right at Christmas time? George, <laughs> George Michael dies, and what yep. does my wife wife send me? This isn't when we're dating. We're just friends. She sends me a meme that says, "Just when you thought you got out of the year safe, wham." That's such a good joke. I love it. It is. It is. And there's George Michael. So we've lost. I mean, I, I feel bad that I'm only thinking of four names right now, but there was so many musicians and actors that we lost in 2016. Plus my mom. It was wow. just a hellish okay, year. So, that's so crazy, dude. My mom passed too. Like, and so right. And, but she was very, very old. She was 94 years old. She had a wonderful life and uh, uh, she passed. So it was George Michael within two days, George Michael, Debbie Reynolds, Carrie Fisher and my mom all went. And so my family, that was the running gag is that she shared, she, uh, she ride shared with them up. And oh, so sure. that's all we ever talked about. It was, we just all the pictures of my mom and Debbie Reynolds and Carrie Fisher and George Michael in the car going to heaven. And that was our, that was our redeeming thing for the year. My mom's thing was she, you know, she had found out she had cancer. She was slowly fading and, uh, the, the Cubs won the world series. I'm on the air doing darkness radio in Minnesota. I'm watching the game in the corner. I'm talking to a guest from Chicago. He's tortured because he's watching the game at home too. And I go, uh, just be prepared because if this happens, the, the show stops. And he's like, that's fine with me. We're going. And my mom's listening in Illinois in her hospice care, right? And we're sitting there and I'm like, yeah, wow. So you saw the headless spirit of Cubs win, Cubs win. And I'm just chanting. I'm so excited and happy. My mom I go in and she goes, well, I got to see my Cubs win and Donald Trump win the presidency. It's time to leave. <laughs> that was it. That was her, her comedy. So okay. she was, yep. She took hey, off after that. Calmus just popped in for, okay. I guess he's coming in for a second. So do you guys, the dude dead, Taylor Calmus showed up with a new baby. Number three, oh, but sorry. he's like right here too. He's we haven't here. spoken, but congratulations. We had texted you. Congratulations. Thanks. I don't know how you're still producing as many uh, videos and content as you are with a new child. It's insane. I've multiplied myself. Are you multiplicity? Are you, are you getting stupider as it's going down the chain? <laughs> yeah, this is, I'm the stupidest one. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know what? This is Jason and Dave, buddies of mine, and dude, dad, uh, obviously. Dude, I see your stuff. He does the Husbands of Target and about 100 other videos. Ah, oh, dude, it's insane. And with the new baby, I'm laughing every, every time I see your videos. Do you see, like, every time I do, like, a story or anything, all the comments are just like, bro, you look tired. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. I guess I am. <laughs> I mean, how is it? I know you, I mean, you, you work so many hours a week. How are you? Is that, are you doing the feedings at night? Just losing your mind? No, Heidi's pretty much handling all that. It's more like with the new baby, it's like, um, cause we got a five-year-old and a three-year-old as well. Yeah. I'm pretty much just on like older kid duty. 
because she can handle all the baby stuff because she's got the bosoms. Um, so you, you got a great set yourself, though, brother. Don't don't sell yourself short. Dude, Dude, I, I think you could do it. Just with breastfeeding at our house. Yeah, yeah. rough up the nipples. You'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah. If they work for a bit, and then he starts to, you know, it's just like his passy, you know. It, work, mm -hmm. it does the trick for a bit. Just for a bit. I can tell you, I'm bad. watching that, and I don't. Um, the first year, I didn't. I don't know if I loved it. I don't know if I loved it. I didn't love it. <laughs> of course. What year did you love, Jamie? And now I really like it. It's you it's like pretty, it now. Yeah. I've loved it for the uh, probably you know once they kind of maybe after a year when they start to have personality and but the first year is just like it, it's like here's a Faberge egg don't break it you know it's like you're just holding it trying to yeah. keep it alive <laughs> yeah. like a year. it's like a very loud plant <laughs> <laughs> that you have to water twenty four seven yeah exactly yeah. yeah. Yeah, you got you're right there with the watering can at all times. You're like, oh, let me let me step out, you know, in the garage and have a beer. Ah, oh, nope, got to water it. You know, I don't know. My rhododendron never took a shit in Target. That's true. <laughs> How are the other kids doing with the new baby? They they like him, you know. They like him, um, but uh, they're both kind of losing their minds too, for sure, hundred percent. The three year old is batshit crazy right now like because she's not the baby anymore she's not the baby anymore now she's jan she's the middle kid yeah oh nobody wants to be jan nobody wants to be jan dude no claire, my second, uh, claire would always tell us she would go I, we, no more kids you're not having any more kids like she was adamant about like i'm the baby i, I don't i don't want anymore yeah no, our son, know. our five-year-old dragged our our son's, uh, one of our twins' uh, car seats out on the porch and told us he was leaving it for Amazon to pay. Oh, terrible. Makes me laugh so hard watching this. I love it. <laughs> the first baby we've ever had on the show besides Dave. I know. Oh. My, uh, when, when my wife was pregnant with our daughter, Pacey, we were vacillating between the name Pacey and Lola. So we kept referring to her as Pacey or Lola. And when we came home from the hospital, Linus, you know, my son was so excited. He was a couple years old and so excited. And then he just started crying uncontrollably. And I said, what's wrong? And he goes, you forgot Lola. You forgot Lola. So he was very upset. And I still, still think at the age of 18, he's bothered that I only brought home one of them. I'm like, no, honey, we, we were just debating on which name to go with. There were never two to begin with. Oh, you left Lola. I can Taylor, tell you, you don't uh, want to bring two home. Taylor, who picked the name? Was there a name? Was there a name fight, or was it both general consensus? Um, I well, she picked the name, but it was my name because we were we were going over two different names, and then I saw her go through birth and was like, "You get to choose," <laughs> because you just did that, and uh, I I sat over here, um, so yeah. You get to choose, but then she, um, she chose the name I was that I had on the table, which I had like been driving down the kids like for months before that. I'm like, yeah, baby Otto, baby Otto, baby Otto. So then the kids are like, yeah, baby Otto, baby Otto. So, you know, I got it stuck in everyone's mind. It was like uh, it was like uh, Stanza. You know, just it was a little earworm you put into everybody. So they were like, "It's a great name." So the baby's name is Otto, and uh, it's it's dude. You got all you, all the three names are pretty fantastic. Um, but I would I would argue does uh, do you make any choices? I feel like I don't I don't make any choices anymore. Those days are over. I, I get my I get my chance. Yeah, I, I make some choices. I'm not gonna lie. I make some choices. Um, he chooses not to piss his wife off. He chooses yeah. to do everything she tells no, him. To. She's actually she's pretty cool because it, well, they also get their therapy because all the hilarious videos he plays her and she plays him. Mm -hmm. I yeah. wish I wish I'd have known you were coming. I'll have to play one uh, you, uh, for anyone who's watching. You should go watch the dude that all of his videos are ridiculous. so funny, so so funny, dude. So thanks, Scott. Um, I love that you, I saw you and I go, you, I, I sent him the leak and I was like, dude, jump in with the baby. That's awesome. So funny. Well, my wife's laying down with the other two right now. So I'm like, yeah, I'll go hang out. See what Jamie and the fellas are up to. 
Dude, we're just using this as an excuse to get away from our families for an hour. So yeah, it's it's just a right excuse. That's why I use headphones. They and honestly, no here. we've already gone 21 minutes. So we said we're done by eight. We're done by eight, but now we're all just hanging out, and we're still oh, we're still going out live to people. Um, and people are still anything else you want to tell everyone? I don't want to. I don't want to keep you on here too long, Taylor. I don't want you to. Um, is there anything else you want to tell people what's going? On? Hey, how's uh, your show on the Magnolia Network? We we should talk about that. July 15th. It's all coming out. It'll come. It'll, uh, yeah. One, one episode has already went up on discovery plus. Right. Other seven will come out July 15th. So it's been, uh, you know, it's been a long time in the work. So it's, it's on the Magnolia network, but discovery owns Magnolia. And then discovery just launched this new plat uh, streaming platform called discovery plus. So then I think, I don't really know the ins and outs of it, but, essentially magnolia shifted and was like okay let's push back our cable release and let's start with our app so they're going to have this magnolia app that's going to be a part of discovery plus and that will roll out on july 15th amazing tell that's people about the show though. this show's phenomenal you go build stuff with uh with people around the country uh yes it was uh, so it's called super dad and basically i had to come alongside another dad uh, and help him build something really awesome for his kids in their backyard. So well, and, like, cool. tell tell the one from the one that's on Discovery now because it's crazy. It's it's hilarious. Yeah, like uh, we built this huge like skate ramp that's connected to a giant A frame playhouse with a rock climbing wall up one side. It's it's huge. It's massive. Um, but it's a super cool episode. It was like it's the one episode that will make everyone cry. Um, but for real, like this dude, like lost his wife to cancer, um, right at the beginning of the pandemic. So not only is he going through the pandemic, he's going through it alone with three kids. Brutal. We um, maybe cry before I, without even the episode. Yeah, but yeah. he's has this like amazing like spirit about the whole thing of like how he like walks his kids through it and stuff that you can't help but just be inspired by the guy. Um, but yeah, so I mean, not, they're not all like that. We didn't, like it's not a show that's like meant to just like make you feel stuff the whole time. But it's supposed to just be a feel good show, um, which is fun because like you know, so much reality television's like they're trying to find the drama and stuff. And literally, ours like even when drama was happening on set of like, oh, this got painted the wrong color, or whatever. The um, showrunners like, don't no, don't need it, don't record it, don't need it. It's like that's not what the show's about. Right, couldn't record any of it, and it was pretty, pretty cool to see it come together. Well, it's cool. It's it's just a you know, it's a validation of all the other stuff you've done because all the crazy stuff I watched you build was all positive. It was never. I mean, that was always the beauty of it. It was never negative. It was about the joy and obviously the exhaustion of parenthood. But I love like yeah. you know, you built a little car with the video screen in front with it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like my favorite thing you ever built. And all the little, uh, the crazy mechanisms in the backyard. I mean, it's just nuts, man. It's really fun. You can't sit down yet. You can't no. I mean, honestly, it's it's warming my heart to watch this, but it's also making me just go, oh, thank God I'm not there right now. That's yeah, are you also like in two weird places where you're like, this is so precious, but at the same time, you're like squirming at the, oh, at the very idea? I don't miss that first year. Like I miss the little babies and stuff when they're like one to two was super fun. But now like Hannah was student of the week this week and, and uh, Claire, I took Claire bike riding today. It's super fun, but yeah, we're going to, there's no more. There's no. I actually. This, this is a good reminder. I need to go get my vasectomy. I haven't done it yet, but I, I need to uh, take care of that soon. Does it matter if you're not having sex? <laughs> uh, by the way, I was waiting for someone to take that. I set you up pretty perfectly. I thought, and just you know, it's that random. It's just that one. It, that's what it'll happen, and that's what it'll even be more frustrating because, like, really, we only had sex once in like three years, and this, and it really took. Oh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like uh it's like your sperm or like a bunch of prisoners that have just been watching that one guard like he's gonna he's gonna put a guard yeah. he's gonna, that, that's that's our that's our shot yeah. right there that guy at that gate that's when it he puts his guard down we're out <laughs> we escaped from alcatraz and, and they never found that guy they don't know where he is <laughs> just you never know you can get away with it so 
Yeah. So is three, are you done at three or are we, or is there going to be uh, I mean, obviously now you have, a, you get a franchise fee, so you could get, you could have go up to six or something. Cause you're, yeah. you know, you're from a small town. You're a, you're a six, six child family, I think. Uh, three. Um, I would you hear that now talk to me in a year and a half. It was like two days after this one came out that my wife was like, mm, I don't think I'm done. I'm like, what? You, you're you wearing a diaper. <laughs> like, how do you say that right now? <laughs> you have you have stitches, a lot of stitches. You have, you have stitches. You're, you're like, that right now you say that. That's crazy. But well, once you have three, Jason has three. And I mean, once you have three, then it's wide open. You can have four, five, six. It's no different. Yeah. There's, no, thank uh, you. Yeah, everyone loves baby content too. So, actually, when you first when you first were pregnant, I was like, "Oh man, we're gonna we're gonna milk this one. This is gonna be there's gonna be a few videos involved with this thing." But honestly, <laughs> dude, each one of them was better than the one before. I was like, "Did you see the one where he exploded into the world?" No, what? Was, no, I didn't oh, see that God. one. His birth, not not his actual birth video, but the fake birth, birth video. I never saw it. Oh, my God. We'll, have to, we'll pull it up at some point. Yeah. It's called I guess people need to go to do. So where can people find you, actually? Because we'll, we'll we'll pull this off as a clip also and then just share it. Yeah, just search Dude Dad on um, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. But it's, the video is called Dad Induces Labor. I thought it was the most brilliant thing, and it didn't take off like I thought it would, but I think still think it's hilarious. Isn't we it funny sometimes like, the thing you think's the best and we, then we, the other we, the little thing you threw away is the one that just blows up. I'm gonna describe it to you because it's you'll just be like, wait, what? Um so we did some camera tricks and we basically like my wife it's like she's like mega pregnant. She's like, you know, forty weeks two days pregnant and she's like i'm so i'm done i'm so done i'm like all right no worries i'm gonna induce you you know which everybody thinks one thing but then i like there's this whole setup where i like put her on a lawn chair and put her feet up and like have kind of recline her back and then like i give her an air hose and put it in her mouth and make her like suck it in <laughs> and then and then we like it literally we had like a stunt double for auto it was like this little like fake baby it we we like flung it out of her uh dress and then cut cut that shot from my buddy throwing the doll across the yard so we, it looks like a oneer it looks like a oneer so you just see this doll just come screaming out of her dress like she gives one good big push flies out clips a tree branch <laughs> and then i catch it it's like i thought it was the funniest thing we'd ever done but it didn't it didn't take off but i still think it's hilarious that's hilarious man but yeah i can see some more some people like this is the most offensive thing i've ever seen no no it wasn't that it was just it i don't think anyone was offended it's just weird, weird. <laughs> but then like but then like it cuts to like again it's a oneer like we make it look catch like it? a oneer did you catch the baby i no i i i caught the fake baby then i walk over with the real baby but right. we cut it in a way that you can't see the camera cut so i like walk up and th then that's when everyone's like holy shit that's the real baby like <laughs> how did that not go viral that's I insane. Don't know. yeah that's pretty I, impressive um yeah i will tell you dude with your stuff the the camera work Whoever's shooting it with the punch ins and the, mm -hmm. it's so well done, man. It's so well done. Thank you. Yeah, that's all. I mean, we were fortunate enough to get to a place where we were like ready to like bring on more help. And my buddy yeah. DJ, like he also left LA to come move here with us, with his family, and uh, kind of and start doing this stuff with me. And he's yeah. just really good too yeah the two of you guys shooting together i mean it's it's, it's really cool it's really good stuff so so um well, you know what we'll do we'll take that clip and then we'll cut into i'll pull the video off of youtube and then we'll we'll splice them together your little telling story and then have that as the, the tag to go out on to go show it but yeah absolutely uh 
All right, dude. I don't want to. I don't want to keep you too late. You got the baby, so yeah. Well, yeah. Congratulations. Please come any any show. I, I just text me and go. I'm coming in, and we'll. Uh, <laughs> if I know you're coming, I'll pull up a video or something, and we'll we'll just because we can show the video and you can talk about it, which we did. We, we showed Richard Marx's uh, old videos, and then he kind of talked about them from the 1980s, and it was super fun. Super fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we're here every Tuesday night. Oh, sick! Awesome. I'm, I'm right. Go get some sleep, would you please? <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, Taylor Kalmas, dude, dead. Thanks, brother. Good to see you. Guys. Um, I do. That's it. It's like 8.30. This has been the longest show. And we still have 37. We have a bunch of people on that one feed watching. We had we had a lot of people, I think, in a while. <laughs> Super fun. Dave Schrader's the man for showing up. Josh Wolf is going to come next week. He's going to talk about um, the... Whatever tragedy, whatever happened. Happened, whatever tragedy befell him. Answer, Unless another wait, tragedy he answer some questions. You know what? We're gonna. I'm gonna put some together some some shit to write him up. So. I have I have a lot of just just very confused about what happened, and I want to know. I mean, for a guy who does high live for a living, I'm pretty sure some some weird shit just went down. So, um, super fun show tonight, my brother. That was right? Actually, I love it when stuff falls apart and then falls together. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, I was like, I was like, I was like, so I, what are we going to do now? I know you were texting me. I got, you texted me, and you're like, is he coming? I go, I don't, I don't know what's happening. And then Schrader was, Schrader was supposed to come. He, he was like, he saw what was happening. He's like, I better come in early and save the day, which he did. Yeah. Um, tell everyone, uh, take us out and tell us, uh, tell everyone where they can find it and how to, uh, how to go back, and then who else is coming? Absolutely. Um, well, next week, apparently, Josh Wolf will be coming back to join us. I think Archie's going to make an appearance. Uh, Archie, we haven't seen Archie for a few weeks, but it'll be nice to get another uh, see check in with him, see how him and the kids and his bathtub full of alcohols are doing. Um, you can find us uh, at the our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash the parents lounge. We do the show live every Tuesday night, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. And you can find it on Twitch, YouTube, and our Facebook page. That's it, my brother. Uh, super fun show tonight. I mean, actually, I, it was like it was a huge therapy session. I feel so much better. So you look more relaxed now. I know everything's kind of chaz. Like, well, also once I put them down, everything was fine. So, uh, all right, my brother. Uh, to everybody watching, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next week here in the Parents Lounge. Good night, everybody. <laughs>